Good morning, everyone. My name is Antonio Reynoso, and I am proud to serve as the president of the greatest borough in the city of New York, which is Brooklyn. And while I'm all Brooklyn all the time, I have to have a conversation about this situation that we are in right now, a crisis of homelessness and a moment when people are seeking asylum and are coming here in the tens of thousands. We have to start at the top. Despite immigration being a federal issue, despite this wave of migration being deeply rooted in civil war, exploitation, and abuses abroad, President Biden and our Congress have failed to show up with any sort of meaningful aid or meaningful leadership for the people who need the help and the municipalities that are tasked with providing it. Just a few weeks ago, after this city already spent more than $1 billion in resources and services for asylum seekers, FEMA showed up for the first time with funding. And I want you to know how much they showed up with. $30.5 million. $30.5 million. When this city is having to pour billions and billions of dollars of our people's money into solving the crisis just to meet the bare minimum standards of living for people here seeking asylum. $30.5 million when this city already had a homeless crisis on our hands, when we already had an affordability crisis, when we already are being forced to cut back and cut corners only to barely deliver the city services our communities rely on. It's unacceptable. And it's on the President of the United States to do something about it. Because a national problem needs a national solution. And what the federal government should have been doing all this time, because despite how it may seem, this problem isn't new, has been figuring out a network of resources, of beds, of jobs, of services across the country that alleviates the strain on any one community while continuing to show up for those who are seeking aid. These Texas communities for years have been dealing with what we've been facing for months. And if we're being honest, we should have all shown up for them much earlier. But we don't have the power over here in Brooklyn. That's President Biden's job. That was President, Trump job, President Trump's job before him. So what I'm interested in is what Brooklyn can do, what New York City and New York State can do. Let's get one thing straight. Just because we can't do everything doesn't mean we can't do something. That's what we're here to talk about today. Because I'm tired of people shouting out criticisms. I'm tired of all the fear mongering. I'm done with the racism, the exclusionary rhetoric, and the hate. That's not what New York stands for. That's not who we are as New Yorkers. So we've got to change the narrative. We've got to welcome these, those who are coming here seeking the same opportunities so many of our families did as well. We've got to use our experiences of hardship to prevent the same from happening to others. We gotta be solution oriented and creative in how we work to show up for our longtime New Yorkers and our newest New Yorkers. We've got to stop asking nicely. This is a crisis, a crisis that requires real action, real compromise and urgency. We can keep on pretending like it's not happening, but that's only going to make it worse and worse and worse. And then one day, like today, when we realize that we can't get away with ignoring it any longer and the consequences of our inaction falls down on us, we're going to be stuck with a mess worse than, what, than if we would have just showed up from the beginning. So New York, Brooklyn, let's show up. Today I'm proposing three legal options that would take to stabilize and fortify our city as well as respond to the housing crisis and crisis in city services that are being exposed by the recent influx of asylum seekers. First, Governor Hoku can exercise state power under emergency declaration issued on May 10th, 2023 to compel municipalities around New York City to contribute immediate shelter and long-term housing. Second, Mayor Adams can issue a new emergency executive order declaring a public emergency over homelessness and not just the arrival of immigrants. As the shelter population exceeds a threshold of 0.5% of the city's population. Third, and most importantly, the city council should pass legislation directing the mayor 
to use government power to solve homelessness, the homelessness crisis through the private sector by leasing private apartments for housing people who have been in shelters for the longest or the longest. To back up for the governor, this would involve not only offering New York City the help of state personnel and use of state facilities under Section 29 of the executive law, but also the suspension under Section 29A of the executive law of local laws that other municipal governments around New York City have invoked to dodge the humanitarian crisis. These are laws such as those in Rockland County invoked to block motels and hotels willing to help, as well as laws preventing the construction of affordable housing around surrounding counties that it would alleviate the crisis. For Mayor Adams, this means unlocking broader government power to address the root of this crisis, which is not the arrival of asylum seekers, but the profound affordability and housing crisis in our city. And for our city council, this meaning legislation does four things. Add the arrival of immigrants or migrants as an emergency under the administrative code. Direct the mayor and the city to lease market rate apartments for housing homeless families towards creating space in our shelter for new arrivals. Require landlords to prioritize renting to the city at the market rate to alleviate the burden. And four, ban the refusal to rent apartments to the city during an emergency crisis. And that legal action by the city council is extremely important. Right now, 80,000 New Yorkers, roughly two thirds of whom are families with children, are living in city shelters. Nearly 40,000 people are seeking asylum, including some counted towards shelter beds and are in city care. Despite the profound need for safe, dignified housing, around 89,000 rent-stabilized apartments and tens of thousands more in market rate apartments could be sitting vacant based on an HPD's 2022 Housing and Vacancy Survey. Many of these empty apartments are the result of warehousing when a landlord declines to list their apartments for rent to keep housing stock low and rents high. But we have the potential to open up thousands of vacant apartments that are currently unlisted or unleased to those who have, are experiencing homelessness, with deference given to those who have been in city shelters the longest, making space in city shelters for people and families arriving to New York seeking asylum. Right now, the average shelter stay is 509 days, 534 days for families with children, and 855 days for families without children. That should not be happening. I don't want to see more of these shelters popping up. That shouldn't be our focus. It's got, it's got to be on real, long-term housing that is the basis of future growth and opportunity for people with families. The wealth of space and housing that exists in this city is unimaginable. Yet, because people care more about the property they own and the money in their wallet than the well-being of their neighbors, these apartments sit utterly and totally empty. It's unconscionable. It's disgusting, and it should anger us all. I want to take a second to talk to those in the private sector, specifically. I want to talk to the CEOs and the titans of industry, the business owners, because you have a lot of power. You have incredible resources, funding, services at your disposal. I'd like to call up the council members and elected officials to stand with me. Families here. I want to thank them for being here. I'll finish my statement. Uh, to the titans of our industry, the business owners, because they have a lot of power. You have incredible resources, funding, services at your disposal, and we need you to volunteer. We need you to volunteer your help the same way you showed up for us during COVID. You are just as much a part of this city as the rest of us. We are a mosaic of public and private institutions and a real response to the homelessness crisis and influx of asylum seekers can't just be led by government. I'll repeat, we are in a crisis, and it's going to keep being a crisis even if we pretend it's not there.
The only way we move out of this state of emergency is by responding to the reality before us by having a plan. But we as New Yorkers, every single person who lives, walks, and works in our neighborhoods need to recognize and accept that we are part of this too. The situation we're in is going to show up in our everyday lives. This is what a sanctuary city looks like. And we need to be leaders in the generosity, the kindness, the acceptance that we claim New York stands for. Take these temporary shelters at schools, for example. I get it. It's not ideal. It's not what we want at all. I have two young sons. I want them to have access to every educational and recreational resource they can. Of course I do. What dad, what parent doesn't. But right now, Adams doesn't have this under control. He's making game time decisions with almost no support at all. And those are some tough conditions. Because while Mayor Adams isn't doing everything right, he's at least doing something. We must be careful to call even more loudly on those who are doing nothing at all. The real estate community that sits on thousands of vacant apartments while families sleep in the streets. Our neighbors in the suburbs who hide behind racist zoning policies and prevent new affordable housing from being built. And the Biden administration that refuses to step up with meaningful aid despite immigration being a federal issue. We've all got to step up. The president and Congress, our governor, our state government, our mayor, our city government, and our city council, and Borough Hall. I promise I'll do anything I can from here in Borough Hall. In fact, I'll open our doors as a shelter to those who are here seeking asylum and those who are unhoused. Mayor Adams, give me a call. And every single person, whether you're an elected official, a business owner, a teacher, a doctor, or a handyman, whoever you are, ask yourself, what can you contribute to the greater good? Is it resources? Is it space? Is it expertise? Is it kindness? We need it all. And we have so much to give. We just need to be creative, stop resisting, and show up with solutions. There are so many things we can do outside of what I've proposed today. today. Private solutions, public programs. Advocates like the New York Immigration Coalition have been naming solutions for years. We could shorten the clock for becoming eligible to be moved to a shelter to permanent housing down from 90 days as it is required now. This is unnecessary, and the mayor could change this tomorrow. We should start with those who have been here the longest, but we can still remove the provision so that people can immediately be placed in permanent housing when possible. We could fund DHS staffing for administration of, of voucher programs, especially those people who assist shelter residents with finding permanent housing. This division is extremely understaffed and slowing down the process. We could fund the New York City Commission on Human Rights, which enforces, enforces voucher discrimination. Having a voucher only gets you so far if landlords won't rent to you, which is illegal. We can expand elig eligibility for vouchers to undocumented people. My point is, it's all out there. Our people, our organizations, our agencies, our elected officials, if we work together, we can not only address the situation at hand, but we can transform how this city shows up for its people entirely. But it's on every single one of us to work together to get this job done and to get it done well. I know we can do it because if there's one thing we know how to do, what to do in this borough, it's to spread love because it's the Brooklyn way. Thank you very much. I want to, as you can see behind me, we have folks that are solution-oriented solution people looking to be supportive and figuring out a way to deal with this crisis. Uh, one of the first people I talked to about the work that we're doing specifically to take private market rate apartments and rent them out for homeless families was uh, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, and I just want to call him up uh, as an ally and somebody that's been working and fighting on immigration rights and reform long before he was Public Advocate in his time as the City Council. I don't think there was a better leader on immigration in the entire City Council while he was there. I would love to call up your Public Advocate, Jumani Williams. Thank you so much. And I want to uh, give uh, the Borough President another round of applause for stepping up to the mic with solutions and consciousness. Thank you so much. Um, and I come up as a, a first-generation American, a son of immigrants. Uh, first, I want to say that it is easy to say who you are until it's time to prove it. It's easy to say that you're a humanitarian. It's easy to say what this country is and who we are and how we will treat people in need. It's easy to say that you're a sanctuary city. It's easy to say these things 
until you're in crisis and have to prove it. We were at a moment in time where our country, our state, and our city should prove who we are right at this moment. To New Yorkers who, in a bird's eye view, see hordes of people coming to this country, to the state, to the city, hordes of people who need resources, who need assistance, and you're scared and you're worried and you're worried about your family, I want to say I understand. Because if we're all truthful, at some point, we feel it too. And we feel those emotions. But you got to take a moment to unpack, to move from the bird's eye and go down in the ground and see the faces of the children who are coming off those buses, the faces, faces of pregnant women, the faces of people who are injured. What would make you take your baby across a journey you have no idea what it's going to be with nothing on your feet, through water, through jungles, trying to get help? That's where we are right now. And how do we provide the humanitarian help that's needed? And to New Yorkers who have been fighting to get assistance themselves for many, many years and haven't gotten it, we have to be careful about us versus them because today we're us, tomorrow we're them. It is very important that we don't blame people who need assistance. The government has always made an excuse not to provide the housing and services that was needed for people who have been here. They would have created another excuse if this was not happening. As a matter of fact, the day before the first bus came, there were over 50,000 people in the shelters on that day alone. The average time then was about 400. A lot of working families, a lot of children who didn't get the housing that they needed. Since then, Tens of thousands of people have come here seeking refuge. The housing and homelessness crisis predates the arrival of asylum seekers, but I have to admit, of course, it is exacerbated by the moment that we're in. The answer is and has always been trying to address our deeply problematic affordable housing crisis. It's not to step back from our legal and moral obligation like the right to shelter or sanctuary city. Our right highlighted in a homeless bill of rights that we passed with the city council just this month. Weakening that right is the wrong response to the real urgent challenge exacerbated by a lack of decisive and timely state and federal action. Denying rights and resources to people arriving in desperate need and fervent hope will not replace action needed from the president who has failed to provide sufficient federal funding or a national response, or the governor who has failed to support the city and therefore the state by coordinating other municipalities. While it is clear that the current situation is unsafe and it is unsustainable, we need democratic leaders on all levels of government to focus on going and getting the support needed to uphold the right to shelter, not to undercut it. The Ball president today is putting forward a plan of solutions that addresses both the challenges presented by the arrival of asylum seekers and the long-standing homelessness crisis and hope that the mayor and the governor take action on it. But I'm calling not just for the Ball president, but everyone to take action today. I know he and the governor are worried. I know the president, I'm sorry. I know the president and the governor are worried about the headlines and poll numbers. Well, I'm worried about the people, the people who need assistance, the people coming here, our newest New Yorkers, our newest Americans who right now are framing their American story for their children and their children's children, and those who have been struggling in the system for a long time that predated them. The answer is to meet the humanitarian needs of some isn't to pit them against the other needs of others, it's to step up and provide both funding and infrastructure needed to bring in new options, new municipalities. We need courage, compassion, and care, not cowardice. I want to be clear, I am just as angry as everyone else. And I'm going to speak for myself. The president is missing in action. I don't know if he's asleep, on vacation, but it's time to wake up. Cities all across this country need your assistance right now, and you're ignoring them. And you're telling New York City to drop dead. That's what you're doing. Wake up, President Biden. Do something, anything. Help coordinate a federal response. That's the job of the federal government, not New York City. The governor has finally woken up. I appreciate it. She's finally doing something. But, Governor, you need to coordinate a municipal response. That is the state's job, not the city. The city is trying to coordinate a state and federal response, and that is not their job. The mayor, he has at times framed this in a way that's harmful. And my hope is that some of that language will change because people are beginning to be in danger. 
But what he's not wrong about is how bad the situation is right now and that we have to get the help needed. The response to that is not to change our status as a sanctuary city. It is not to change our right to shelter. It is to stand tall and lean into those things because it makes us who we are. Let's step up at this moment. Do what we can with what we have where we are. People will remember this moment. We have always come through crisis, 9-11, a pandemic. This is one we have to deal with now. And there are real people, real human beings who are looking to us simply for assistance. But I gotta be clear, New York City cannot do this alone. We simply cannot. We need real estate to step up, definitely the president, definitely the mayor, and all New Yorkers to work through this with compassion and humanity. There's been tests of our forefathers, of our ancestors. This is our test. Are we gonna come through it or are we not? Thank you. So our public, Germani Williams, public advocate, Jamani Williams, thank you so much. Uh, I want to call up our council member from, I'm not, I won't say the, all the areas you represent because it's a lot, uh, but council member Chiose. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, borough president, and thank you, public advocate Williams. Uh, we're in a time of crisis here in our city. I'm New York City Council Member Chio Se, representing the 36th District, including the neighborhoods of bed and Crown Heights. You know, there are some, a couple solutions that the City Council is putting forward. Uh, we just need the political will and the urgency to fight uh, to house those that are in the shelter system and have been in the shelter system for some time. Uh, the City Council is working on a package of bills to expedite the City FEPS uh, process, as well as increase access to City FEPS so that those can find housing here in New York City and get out of the shelter system to provide more space for new New Yorkers or the new asylum seekers that are coming into our city. Uh, as the borough president said, uh, we are calling on real estate. Uh, we're calling on the private sector to really stand up. I know that the private sector is always thinking about how to make the biggest bang for their buck. Well, you're not going to make a bang for your buck if people are continuing to be put on the streets and we're continuing to see an oversupply of new New Yorkers coming into our city. Uh, and to President Biden, uh, to Governor Hochul, turning your back on New York City is turning your back on the United States of America. New York City is a financial powerhouse of this country. If you do not support our city, both with federal funds and state assistance, then we will see a collapse in our economy. We will see harmful hits taken on our country in a time when our economy has only started uh, to recover after the pandemic. Now, there are solutions that are ahead of us. We just need the political will. Uh, the mayor is, is, is stepping up and doing his job. He's not turning people away uh, from our rightful duty uh, in accepting new New Yorkers. However, we need our elected officials on all level of government to hold the private, private sector accountable, uh, to make them support humanity uh, rather than uh, increasing their profits. So thank you to the borough president and the public advocate uh, for holding this press conference and for providing solutions uh, to keep our city afloat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Chiosa. I'd like to call up Council Member Lincoln Ressler. <clears throat> thank you so much, borough president for putting forward solutions for your leadership. You know, representation matters. And having our borough president uh, be the son of Dominican immigrants uh, speaks to somebody who understands the challenges that immigrants face each and every day. But the migrant crisis we are facing now is unprecedented. And we do need leadership at every level of government to step up. I appreciate that Mayor Adams has continued to support our hold as a sanctuary city, our claim as a sanctuary city. But it's also clear that he's out of ideas. Putting migrants in gymnasiums, proposing utilization of a jail, the most notorious jail complex in the United States of America, that is unconscionable. Migrants deserve better. Human beings deserve to be treated like human beings. Unfortunately, that is not what people are experiencing tonight on the streets in the gymnasiums of New York City schools. We have to come up with better solutions. There are tens of thousands of vacant apartments in the city of New York tonight. Why are we not expediting housing placements from families in shelter. 
Why are we not moving migrants directly into vacant homes where they can access a kitchen and a bathroom? The basic dignity that every person deserves. These are real and viable solutions that we can ad advance today. It is a question of political will. It's time for Mayor Adams to call on the real estate industry to step up as partners in this effort. And it's time for Governor Hochul and President Biden and for our friends in the suburbs to step up as well. Folks in Orange and Rockland County revolted when 20 or 30 people were gonna be housed in their community. There are 40,000 migrants sleeping in New York City tonight. Every community has to step up and help across the state and across the country. And that is where we need our governor and our president to partner with Mayor Adams to lead and to provide homes for people who need them. You know, we are very proud to be a city of immigrants. Along the Statue of Liberty, it says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of, yours, of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. We will always be a home for people who are struggling, for migrants and for homeless New Yorkers. Those are our values. We will uphold them as New Yorkers. And we ask that every leader across our city especially our partners in the real estate industry, step up and start housing people in need today. Thank you. Thank you, you Councilmember Ressler. Uh, Councilmember Rita Joseph. Good morning, everyone. Um, I had to write my notes, it's been a lot. So thank you, Will President. I'm happy to stand alongside with my colleagues um, in government as we come together as one voice on this crisis. And we've known and we've seen this before. During the pandemic, we rallied together as one. Now we must rally together again, calling on all stakeholders, all, all leaders in government to step up and help our families that are coming here. Um, this is just another crisis and we must coordinate with all school stakeholders as well. And we cannot leave them out of the conversation. To be effective, we must lead with compassion and empathy I come from an immigrant family. I am them and they are me for now. And I sit at the city council. Now more than ever, we must fight together, not harmful rhetoric and treat our New Yorkers and our families. I'm committed to supporting you, board president, and my colleagues behind me as we navigate this crisis. Um, it's been a lot, but this is New York. We're strong, we're resilient, and we will stand tall and we will work with all levels of government to make sure we come up with solutions. Thank you, Board President. Thank you so much. That's my sister from the other side of the island and my sister from the other island, uh, Council Member Alexa Aviles. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alexa Aviles. I'm the Council Member of District 38, which includes the neighborhoods of Sunset Park, Red Hook. Um, we are an immigrant community, a welcoming community that has been welcoming new New Yorkers probably since the beginning when indigenous people were on those lands. We are absolutely in a crisis, but I must underscore that while our community is deeply struggling right now from holding disparities, unlike other neighborhoods in our city, our community, while it is up in arms right now as one of the sites of school gymnasium, is not saying send them over there. They are finding places within the neighborhood that can house others. They understand as immigrants themselves that everyone deserves dignity and respect and that we must hold those standards and those values despite the pressures, despite the discomforts. And so they are racking their brains around, and community members know every building that is empty, that is underutilized. Give them an opportunity, have a conversation. And that's what we have been asking for. We have been asking to be included in the conversation to find the solutions. So I'm deeply thankful to the borough president, to my colleagues, and absolutely underscore that New York City cannot do it alone. And we are demanding that this inaction on the federal government 
and on behalf of the state government, that they step up because this is a defining moment of our country. And either we will raise to the challenge and we will be proud and we will be demonstrating to our children the actual values of our country or we will be demonstrating a pure failure and lack of dignity and humanity. I remain optimistic that we will step up to this challenge, but we need every level of government to come together and to plan and to be thoughtful. And like I had mentioned to our parents as a mother myself, our children are watching. They are watching our language, our posture. They are learning. They are learning how we, as a country, will address this situation right now. And so we must hold fears and lean into our compassion and our creativity. And I believe we can find solutions, but it will require everyone to be slightly uncomfortable. And so I just am standing here in solidarity to say we must all give a little. Our city, every resident, every neighborhood, this cannot fall on just eight neighborhoods who have been struggling, who have been deeply under-resourced for decades. That is not okay. We must share in this effort. We must share equally with compassion. And we have to find solutions. And so with that, I stand here in solidarity with all of my colleagues, demanding that every New Yorker, every elected official, every person who has said they're committed to the public step up in this particular time. And we reject any xenophobic comments, any anti-immigrant comments. We are one human race, and we must ensure the safety and security of all of us. And so with that, I want to thank you for your time and attention. I want all of us to dig deeper, to remember our neighbors, to remember our own stories and our own ancestors who struggled, and to remember our own humanity. So with that, thank you so much, Borough President. We just also want to recognize we've been joined by staff of uh, uh, Assembly Member, oh no, State Senator Andrew Gennardis, yes, uh, Assembly Member Farah Safant, and uh, State Senator Julia Salazar, who are all here with us. Um, so thank them. And also, I want to open it up to questions on topic. Questions? You want to say something? Um, sure. Uh, the public advocate does what he wants. No, that's not true, but thank you. But ma'am, <clears throat> I wanted to just make sure that you were recognized and your anger was recognized because it's important. And, and I know a lot of people are feeling it. And it shouldn't be ignored because it's not being ignored in, in the streets. My, I would assume you're a parent in a school. Um, and um, I, say it again? 189. So one, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say that um, uh, Rikers is better than a, a school gymnasium, but I would say a gymnasium is probably not where we want anyone to sleep. What I would ask is that if we not get rid of the anger, because I think we should all be angry, but if we can help harness it and focus it in the right place, because what's happened in past and uh, what's happened in history is we've started going at each other, people who need help. And so I'm just gonna ask if you and others can join us in, in, in pushing the, uh, the, the Biden administration, pushing uh, the governor, even pushing the mayor, and real estate, who has these vacant apartments right now if we can all together focus that anger, I think it would be good because I'm, I'm very worried about where it goes if we can't all use that anger together. The mayor decided that. Yeah. No, no, the Board of Ed has nothing to do with it. This is an executive order from the mayor.
Just give us an opportunity to, to respond. Monday, I was one of the first people on the ground as the education chair in the building, and I did flag that for New York City Public Schools. I convened, I convened with everyone, and I made them do a walkthrough. And I'm familiar with the mini building. It's, it houses first grade and second grade, and it's a 20 feet. I even measured it with them. So I did invite them. That when we were there, I was there with police, and YPD was there, New York City Public Schools was there to, show, to make sure that I did a walkthrough with them, along with the superintendent and the principal. So we were there, and they are aware, and I am staying on top of it. But also, man, go ahead. But man, so, so one, this, this press conference wasn't, but we don't have the answers to your questions. Yeah, but the, so, so just yeah. so a couple of a couple of things. So, ma'am, we're gonna we, we're we're gonna have this conversation, and I just want you to know that one, the mayor office, the mayor, is the person that you should be targeting related to the decision he made because it's an executive. Hey, can I can I just go back and forth? See He's not here. You're in Borough Hall. What we're doing and what you see here is that if these uh, solutions get implemented, it will relieve the city from the pressures of having to even use a gym as an option. So what we're doing here is providing solutions and alternatives to the mayor saying, hey, we're ready to step up. We're ready to take 70 people in this building, in this building, so that maybe we relieve your school from having to take on the, the, the migrants. We're giving, you, we're giving you alternatives to solve for the problem. My but, is coming over. But we, and we're gonna, and exactly. We want every parent that's here, if you can stay till after, we're gonna give you an audience and we're gonna have a discussion about how we can channel this energy to bring solutions to the issues that you have but also showing you that we're stepping up. We're showing people alternatives. But this back and forth is not going to be healthy to figuring out the solution to the problem, unfortunately. Not, not right here. My but let's, right that's it. her staff. My staff is going to give, we're going to go to a room and we'll have a discussion. But I just want to allow for the media to have the last questions and then we're going to close it out so that we can talk to some of the parents. Any questions? Oh, and in Spanish. All right. All right any questions? All right. Um, en este momento lo que tenemos en esta crisis de la ciudad de Nueva York es buscar soluciones. En este momento sabemos que el alcalde ya ha propuesto o proponió ideas que no han dejado con mínimos recursos para ayudar a los migrantes. Ya no hay a dónde buscarle vivienda, lo estamos metiendo en gimnasios, él está hablando de meterlo en la, en, las, en la jaula de Rikers Island. Eso no son soluciones. Lo que yo estoy proponiendo al lado de los electos que usted ve aquí y el defensor público, Jumani Williams, son soluciones, primero, del presidente Biden, que haga algo. No importa lo que sea, haga algo. De lo un billón que nos dio el Estado, más de un billón que hemos gastado aquí en la ciudad de Nueva York, el gobierno federal, el Congreso, el Senado y el presidente nos ha dado 30, mil, 30 millones de dólares. 30 millones comparado a lo que no ha dado el Estado de un millón y la ciudad que ha gastado más de un millón. También buscándole a, a la gobernadora, en este momento la gobernadora puede ser con una acción ejecutiva, asegurar, a garantizar que el, las ciudades y las ciudades del Estado que no están haciendo nada, como Rockland County, Nassau, Long Island y Upstate, pueden comenzar a recibir migrantes para ayudarnos con este problema. Y ella puede hacer eso con una orden ejecutiva. El alcalde, buscando que diga que ya hay un crisis de personas que no tienen vivienda aquí antes de que llegaron los migrantes. Antes de que llegaron las personas buscando asilo, ya había un problema. Y el alcalde no hizo nada en ese tiempo, los alcaldes antes de él no hicieron nada. Y ahora tenemos un crisis doble por la inacción de esos alcaldes. Estamos diciéndole que haga un crisis de, vivienda, de, de gentes que no tienen vivienda y buscar que la marqueta privada, los privados, los desarrolladores, los caseros, nos pueden dar apartamentos en este momento para mudar a las familias que están en los shelters de, de Nueva York. Ahora mismo estamos pagando más dinero en hoteles que habían pagado buscándole un apartamento a los que están en los shelters de Nueva York. Buscando al Consejo Municipal que pase una ley que sea discriminación, no darle un lease a la ciudad de Nueva York. Si la ciudad de Nueva York llega donde ti, te va a pagar la renta que está pidiendo, no puede discriminar contra la ciudad de Nueva York, es lo que esperamos del Consejo Municipal. Y de último, aquí en este edificio tenemos un cuarto comunitario 
y estamos disponibles a convertir ese cuarto a un lugar a donde pueden entrar los migrantes temporariamente, lo estamos haciendo disponible. Eh, tenemos cada parte de gobierno, del federal hasta aquí, en el, el Consejo Municipal, soluciones. Si estas soluciones se buscan o, o las iniciativas se activan, creemos que esas conversaciones de gimnasio, las conversaciones de Rikers Island, no son necesarias. Y es tiempo que dejamos de buscar soluciones de infraestructura y recursos públicos y comenzamos a movernos a recursos e infraestructura de la privada. Eh, muchas gracias a todos por estar con nosotros y ahora estamos disponibles para preguntas. Primero quiero estar el temor, no, eh, la, la, la pregunta ya está mal, porque el temor no existe. Sí, pero no debe de existir, es por una ignorancia, es la falta de información. La falta de información y especialmente la prensa, eh, habla latino, habla español, está hablando y poniéndole la cámara alrededor de lo que están protestando, no a los alrededor de lo que están apoyando. Y quiero decir muy claramente, en el tiempo que los migrantes han llegado a Nueva York, no ha habido ni un incidente de crimen con ningún migrante que ha entrado a Nueva York. Tenemos más de 70 mil, casi 70 mil van a entrar a esta ciudad y el crimen sigue bajando mes por mes por mes en el tiempo que están aquí. Si, si, si queremos, podemos decir que entrando los migrantes a Nueva York no ha hecho más seguro, no ha hecho más seguro porque sigue bajando el crimen cada mes que ellos están en este momento. Esa es la conversación que tenemos que tener con los padres que están... Uh, peleando, tienen un temor, ese temor no tiene justificación porque debajo de la información que tenemos nosotros, los migrantes nos han hecho más seguro en esta ciudad y no han cometido crimen, no son peligrosos, son igual como la mamá mía que llegó en 1980 a este país, ella no fue uh, una persona que debieron de tener eh, eh, temor, una mujer que vino a trabajar, mi papá vino a trabajar y hacerse una vida diferente, progresar, dar una oportunidad para que el hijo de ella pueda ser el presidente del condado de Brooklyn. Eso no, lo, no voy a responder a ninguna pregunta, especialmente a la prensa latina que hable de temor, porque eso no existe. Pues te está diciendo cómo le debe de responder. Ese temor no tiene justificación. Primero, esperen información. Ahora mismo yo creo que mucho de temor que existe es de falta de información. Igual como nosotros, la contabilidad de los que son uh, apoyadores de Trump, que siempre llega del de temor de ellos, no tiene justificación tampoco, que llega de misinformación. Y ellos lo que tienen que hacer a los padres, primero dan una oportunidad de ver cuál es el problema, cuál es lo, lo, la situación y para buscarle soluciones. Nosotros lo último que queremos hacer es poner a cualquier niño, a cualquier familia en peligro. Por otra vez, quiero decir muy claramente que estas familias que están llegando, estas personas que están llegando, no, no son criminales, no han hecho nada en este, en este país, sino han, han ayudado y otra vez el crimen ha bajado. Para los padres, nosotros estamos buscando soluciones para que no tengan que entrar a esos gimnasios. Eso es lo último que queremos. Nosotros queremos que ellos tengan apartamento y que vivan en dignidad. Y eso es lo que estamos buscando. Estas soluciones que ustedes ven ahora hace que esos gimnasios no tengan que ser parte de la solución. Y recuérdense, ahora estamos pensando en meter a uh, eh, los migrantes en, en jaulas, en, en, en Rikers Island, a donde están muriendo, diez, han murido casi 16 personas en el último año. Eso no, se, no, se, no merecen eso. Pero ya hay soluciones que el alcalde no ha encontrado, que no ha buscado. Él lo que está haciendo es nada más buscando los recursos debajo de... De, del público, la infraestructura y los recursos públicos. Ya vamos a hablar con los privados, los desarrolladores que están cobrando 5, 6, 7 mil dólares mensual por un apartamento, ellos se tienen que enseñar. Y si no quieren, nosotros debemos hacer algo más debajo de la ley para asegurar que sean parte de la solución.
I can agree with the, the wealthy suburbs. It could have just been suburbs. I agree that we could have done better there, so I apologize for that. Uh, but second, uh, we're all making sacrifices. You're talking about code issues or zoning issues that exist in the states outside of New York City. We're housing people in public school gymnasiums. We've done everything we possibly can do in this city. We've squeezed every ounce of resource that can, and infrastructure that can possibly exist. So when we talk about housing challenges outside of the city, they can be met through executive order by the governor. So long as it's safe and dignified housing, we should use them, they should be, an, uh, they should be used as an alternative. And I wanna be clear, we're talking about hotels that as of today are being used by tourists coming into those areas. And those tourists are safe, there are no code issues there. Why not allow migrants to be able to be in there? That is a non, there's no excuses for that one, I think. We're talking about people pushing away 30 and 40 people, and we're taking on 30 and 40,000 people. So I, I just wanna say is, uh, my empathy there is, is extremely limited. Um, so so just, uh, just wanna be mindful of that. Okay, there you go. So all the parents here, let me see that. Which one, only there? Okay, we just got news that the mayor, the mayor just reversed his decision on the school gymnasium in PS 188. So to the parents of 188, the 189, that one says 188 there. In Coney Island, the parents of the Coney Island school, as of five seconds ago, uh, there will be no migrants entering into that school. And I think specifically, we had the councilwoman speak to issues that they had related to proximity. Um, so the, the, it seems like they're returning that over. I don't, that's the only information we got. We're getting updates as we talk. And we, the public advocate wants to respond to the same question. Went to the question before, yeah, I, I just want to make it clear, um, and those things that you raise are important, but the governor is not really doing much of anything right now. So, sh like, she can help walk us through these things. She can be helping coordinate other municipalities, coordinating a, uh, other um, county leaders and executives, coordinating response. It's the city that's been trying to do that. The city, that's not the city's job to do that. And so you've raised some important questions that should be answered, but the governor should be presenting her plan of how she's coordinating the rest of the state. Because right now the city has to coordinate the state and do some federal responses, and that's just not a sustainable thing. We got like time for maybe two more questions. So we, we had some conversations with the mayor's office related to the legality of the issue. We're not asking for eminent domain here. We're not taking apartments. We're simply renting them at market rate. Uh, from what we understand, as of this morning, the mayor's office and EDC is looking into build, uh, setting out contracts um, to actually house folks in these apartments. And we want to be clear, too, about the order of things. There have been people in the homeless shelter system in the city of New York that have been looking for apartments for quite some time. We want to make sure that we give them the opportunity to move into these apartments, these luxury apartments temporarily until we can find them better, a better situation. But we want them to go first. And then it opens up more sustainable and dignified opportunities. We have resources in homeless shelters that we just don't have in hotels. We have resources in homeless shelters that we just don't have um, in, in gymnasiums. So our goal is to first uh, empty out the homeless shelters of the people that have been waiting there for up to 800 days in some case free up the shelter system so that we can take the migrants into those systems. So I want to be clear that the first, we want to make sure that we're, we're clear that the first people that get opportunities into these apartments be the people in the homeless shelter system who were the first crisis we had before the second crisis came in. So this is uh, unfortunately an, an issue of long-term uh, racist infrastructure. So the schools that we are talking about are schools that have standalone gyms. These are gyms that are completely separated from the original building that was built. And when you go to these schools, unfortunately they're in neighborhoods that are mostly predominantly black and brown neighborhoods. So uh, also proximity is an issue. Uh, logistically, the mayor's office wanted so that if they did have a bus that they needed a send people to these gymnasiums, that they were all clustered together so that the bus doesn't need to travel from the Northern Bronx all the way down to Coney Island, for example. It would be able to house all the people 
within a, a close proximity so that we're not driving all over the city of New York. So it's just a, proxy, a logistical issue. That is why they're all in Williamsburg. For example, Williamsburg has five schools. It isn't that they think uh, there's no other place to put them. It's that they want to keep everything clustered so that the bus doesn't need to drive around the entire city to, to bring people to their location. They can do it all in one setting in one trip. It's a logistical issue. And I'm not saying I support it in any way, shape, or form. I'm just giving you the information. Um, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you. Thank you to all my colleagues behind me. Uh, we'll see you soon. All right.